Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. A nostalgic look back at our favorite Rangers from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm Tom Browning, along with my co-host Rob Berger. We can be heard on Google Play, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and of course, our website at GoTommyBoyProductions.Lipson.com. That's GoTommyBoyProductions.Lipson.com. Please check it out. You can capture all of our episodes on our webpage. You can contact us by just clicking on the contact bar. You can access all of our episodes. You can leave a message. We'd love to hear from you. Love to hear about the players that you would like for us to profile. Love to hear about maybe some of the seasons other than the 60s, 70s, and 80s that really made an impact on you as a fan. Again, we will be going off the menu every once in a while. We'll be talking about the current day New York Rangers, the state of the franchise. And again, we love to talk about previous playoff games, impactful trades that took place in New York Rangers history. So wherever you listen to us, please hit subscribe. It's free. So without further ado, here are your hosts, Tom Browning and Rob Berger. Welcome to another edition of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. I'm Tom Browning, along with my great friend and co-host, Rob Berger. Rob, how are you doing today, bud? I'm all right, Tom. How are you? Not too bad. It's hard to believe we're uh, already in mid-July. So much hockey news going on. You're back from a vacation. Uh, let's talk today about the draft once again and maybe some of the free agent signings that have taken place with some of the local teams and across the league to end the, the podcast. What was your overall thought about the, about the draft going back a couple of weeks now? Well, I, I know we disagree about this. Um, I, I'm a little more optimistic about the Rangers draft than you are. I'd like the pick of – I'll let you talk about that, but I like the pick of Keandre Miller – um, I thought he fell farther than um, he was going to. I think he'll be a good fit, uh, right-handed defenseman, uh, American defenseman. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, it looks like Kratzoff is not going to be coming uh, this season to play for the Ranger, uh, uh, to play for the Rangers. But why, why didn't you give me why, why you didn't think the Rangers did as well as they should? Well, just before I – you know, I know the last time we uh, we attempted the, the podcast, I'd given you my thoughts on it, and I'll do so in a, in a moment. But since then, I looked at what some of the uh, the experts thought about the New York Rangers draft, and I looked at the Sporting News, and the, the Sporting News gave the Rangers a D grade. They and the Nashville Predators were the only two teams that had as low as a D on their report card, and their overriding concern was very similar to what you and I discussed the last time we spoke, and that is... They did okay with Kraft's office, number one. I think they would have preferred that the Rangers, they had a, a, a great talent in Wallstrom right there for the picking, or Noah Hobson. And again, the Rangers picked a plethora of defensemen during the draft. But they had probably two of the greatest talents that fell outside of the top 10 in Wallstrom and Noah Hobson, not to mention Bodie Wild, who most of the experts felt was the steal of the draft. When all was said and done, when all seven rounds were done, they felt that Bodie um, Wild was probably the, the biggest steal of the draft. So the Islanders got three top 10 talents, and the Rangers had every opportunity to replicate, to make that happen themselves. And the Sporting News felt that this was a, a draft that really could have set the direction for the Rangers on a Stanley Cup trajectory with three first-round picks. And even though the Kraftsoft pick was okay. They thought it was an attractive pick. All of the, Wall Street was the guy they would have went with. They said, they felt that it went downhill from there. They felt that the reach for DeAndre Miller was just too much to give up a second round pick just to move up four spots. When in a similar situation, the St. Louis Blues only had to give up a third round pick to move up a similar amount of spots in that first round themselves. And DeAndre Miller is a project. He's a raw kid. He's a great athlete, but you know, it's like the Jerry Reese thing. Jerry Reese with the Giants always had this penchant for drafting the best athletes. But you got to draft the best football players. And I think the Rangers need to draft the best hockey players. I mean, I don't think you necessarily have to draft the strongest kid, the most athletic kid. You need to draft the best hockey players. And that's where I was really disappointed when I thought they could have gotten DeAndre Miller with the, maybe their last first round pick or even early second round pick. They kept their picks in the second round. They might have been able to get DeAndre Miller. They might have even been able to get this kid, uh, Niles uh, Lundqvist. 
they probably could have gotten Wallstrom and Kraftsoff because Kraftsoff, they felt, would have gone late in the first round because he was he had a KHL contract. And as it turns out, the Rangers are not going to see this kid for another year in North America. And I don't know, Rob, if you're drafting in the top 10, 11, 12, and you're drafting a first rounder, this kid better have a good shot to make your club this year, especially when you're a, a second division team like the New York Rangers. You know, you, you want your number round, number one uh, first round pick to at least play some games in the beginning of the season before that nine game tryout, you know, doesn't burn an extra year on the contract. So, you know, that's my feeling. Yeah, you know, TSN had them as a B. CBS Sports had them ranked as a B. But um, I just felt that this was a watershed moment. And I thought they just, after that first pick, I just felt they really, they got too cute. And I think they dropped the ball a little bit on that. But I know you disagree. I do. I, I think, you know, a lot of it is just your, you've become bitter as a Ranger fan, as a Ranger fan <laughs> and haven't seen a lot of success with the Ranger drafts over the, over the years, especially in, in recent memory, not uh, over the last decade. Not, not a lot has come out of the drafts. Um, more has come out of free agency and trades um, in terms of overall success for the team. But no, I, I think, you know, it, it, it doesn't help that the Islanders did so well in the draft. Um, and you, even though they've had a rough go the, since the draft uh, and free agency this year, like the, the Islanders didn't even have to draft. They didn't have to plan anything because everything fell their way. Yeah, I mean, look at the draft. I mean, you got Oliver Wallstrom, 6'1", 208 pounds already as a 17, 18-year-old. You see these kids when they go up on stage, you know, they're a little of a wisp. You know, they're, 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 not, they're not filled out. This guy, and he, he's kind of like a young Rick Nash, the way he drives to the net on, on virtually on every shift. He's very powerful. Then you got Noah Hobson, as we talked about. And you got Bodie Wild, who they, they feel is another Niedermeyer. He's got the quickness and the aggressiveness of a Scott Niedermeyer. And then they drafted what they say is the best Czechoslovakian goalie in this kid's uh, Skarik, who they say is the best goalie since uh, Hasek to come out of Czechoslovakia. And that was a th- one of the things that they that Sporting News mentioned about the Ranger draft. They drafted this kid, um, the goalie, was it Lindbaum, I guess his name, at number in the third round. And they felt that this kid could have been had in the fourth or fifth round, that they they went way too early for a goalie. He's not even, he wasn't even the best goalie in the draft. And he was, matter of fact, they rated him fifth or sixth amongst, amongst goalies. And he was the first goalie drafted in the draft this year. So I don't know. It's, um, and they said the rest of the draft, the rest of the players the Rangers drafted, uh, they drafted a lot of D men, are not projected to be. All-star talent. They're not projected to be game breakers or exceptional talent. So I don't know. I mean, the proof's in the pudding. I, I was a real Jeff Gordon fan, but I don't know. His moves have been very curious for the last couple of years. And, um, you know, from Leah Sanderson drafting him as early as they did last year to uh, not picking Wallstrom and uh, Noah, uh, Noah Dobson. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But Kraftsoff not making the team this year because he's got a year in the KHL to go I think really and they could have I think Rob they could have had him late in the first round maybe early second not that he's not a first round talent but teams shy away that early in the draft when you have to, another year to burn in your uh, in your KHL contract you know the Russian players are tricky that way you know well you know it won't matter if he, if he comes here in a year and then his lights out Oh, yeah. Uh, if he's a Kuznetsov or a Kucherov type of player, you're right. I mean, this will be forgotten. They need to make a statement. This has to be the most important. Dra- this is the most important draft or was the most important draft probably in the last 20 years for the New York Rangers. And I don't know. I mean, guys smarter than me gave them the highest grade they got was a B. And they had three first round picks. And Sporting News had them ranked as a D. I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, Kendra Miller could be a stud, but he's raw. He's brand new to the position on defense. And I always get a little bit nervous when they say he's a great athlete. You know, that's great. But I want hockey players, you know. I I want, you know, I just want guys who know how to play the game, who have demonstrated that they can play. But we'll see. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it, I know these, these, these publications have to give grades now, but it's a little silly to give grades before any of these guys have even put skates on. Right. And if true, and you know, if you want to transition, if you wanted to see them make a splash in the draft, they sure did not make a splash in free agency. No, but you know, I'm kind of glad they didn't. The only two guys that I was hoping the Rangers would go with uh, Rob, because I think they need, I mean, Jeff Gordon admits that they need some leadership. They need some physicality. If you look at the team right now, they have a lot of skill type players. 
but there isn't a lot of strength. There isn't a lot of physicality to help protect these kids. If they are truly in a rebuilding mode, then you have to imagine they're going to have a lot of youngsters playing for the next two years, getting their feet wet, getting a lot of ice time. But again, these are 18, 19, 20-year-old kids who are not even finished growing yet. And you're going to need someone or a few guys to step up and protect them. And two guys I thought would be perfect fix for the Rangers, and they wouldn't cost a lot, was Patrick Maroon. He could have been a left winger to protect some of the younger kids if, in fact, they're going to start next year for the Rangers. He's a good player, a solid citizen. He's physical. He can. He's strong down low. And I think he would have given them uh, some protection. And Matt Martin, who I thought would have been a very low-cost addition, he, he loves New York. I know he's dating uh, Boomer Esiason's uh, daughter. He is a perfect fit for the New York Rangers. He's a tough, hard-nosed player, a big, big kid. And I thought he would have been a great low-cost addition for the New York Rangers. And two guys that could have protected the kids. And I thought those were two misses right there. Again, where I thought Jeff Gordon missed the boat to get guys that can protect uh, the youngsters. Well, well, Pat Maroon is, did what uh, John Tavares did. And, you know, he, he went home. To St. Louis. To St. Louis. So I don't know if you could fault Gordon on that. And then Matt Martin, you know, what What would you, you know, that really wasn't a, a free agent signing, though. No, That was a it trade. Wasn't. And, you know, I don't know what the Rangers would have given up to, to bring him back. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't want them to overpay for Matt Martin. I don't think, I don't think they would have overpaid for him. I, I You know, I don't know. What did the Islanders give up for Matt Martin? I'm trying to remember. I don't think it was I don't think it was much, right? I mean, I think it was a marginal player, if memory serves me correctly. But they needed, the Maple Leafs needed to get rid of money. They needed cap space when they signed Tavares. So I think the Rangers could have given up maybe a mid-round prospect or a late-round draft pick for Matt Martin. I don't think he was going to cost that much. I forget exactly who the Islanders sent. They just sent a minor league uh Goalie, right? Yeah, goalie a goalie, to... I believe. Yeah, right from the EHL, I believe. I don't think. Yeah, they they didn't send they didn't send much for him yeah. except you you know, but they are um, taking on the contract, which is a big one, which is two and a half million a year. Yeah, but the Rangers have ton of cap space. As is, as did the Islanders, really. Yeah, but but other than that, the, the Rangers kept quiet. Just re- you know, and they still have a a few free agents that they need to take care of. Yeah, they, they did sign uh, Frederick Clausen, who I guess uh, had his moments with Ottawa when they went to the finals a couple of years ago. But, uh, you know, he's a depth guy. You know, he's not going to, I think he's, what, 27, maybe 28 years old. That's a curious signing. I mean, you've got all these young kids, right? I mean, you know, you got, um, you know, you got Smith coming back this year. They really, the Rangers want to give this guy a shot. They paid him a ton of money. He's been working out like a, a gym rat this year. So, you know, hopefully he's motivated to make the team. You can't get rid of Stahl. You got Brady Shea. You got uh, Neil Pionk and Gilmore from last year. You got Rob O'Gara in the trade from the Boston Bruins. And then you got some other kids, you know, uh, from the Tampa and the Bruins signings, you know, that uh, they may want to fit in. So I just don't know where, you know, where Clausen fits in, you know, to the, to the, in the scheme of things, unless they're going to flip him maybe for a, a trade before the, uh, the end of the summer, which is always a possibility, I guess. I mean, there was talk that Brady Shea might be in a package for Carlson. You know, there was a lot of talk about that last week. So I don't know. Maybe, but like you said, it's not an earth shatter. <laughs> it's not an earth shattering uh, deal by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, and what the, you know, what I'm curious to see what happens to guys like VC and Hayes and Brady Shea and Ryan Spooner. If, how much, how much of an effort they're going to make to bring these guys back? Because right now, the roster going into next season, there's still definitely work to do. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, these are skilled guys. I mean, you know, VC, he's been a disappointment. But a lot of, a lot of the blogs feel that was because of AV. You know, I really think AV, <laughs> AV has really taken a lot of heat. And I'm not so sure it's warranted. You know, he was, he's been the whipping boy. But, you know, if we, you know, like Parcel said, you are what your, what your track record says you are. You are what your record says you are. The guy is a 600% winning percentage in the National Hockey League. I think, I think the Rangers are going to look back. Five ten years from now, they they're going to look at Tortorella and Av as two coaches who really got every lance, every land last ounce of blood out of that rock with with the with the rosters that these guys uh, had. They were never blessed with a lot of talent, and I, I think they're going to appreciate Av and Torts a lot more when all is said and done five ten years from now. But you know, with that said, there's a lot of guys that have no more excuses now for not performing. You know, they need to step up. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, and, and, and they come into a roster that's far from complete. Um, you know, this team is still still has a few slots, you know, three slots to fill at the forward position. Um, there are six defensemen under contract right now, but some tough names that you're going to have back there. Uh, assuming Keandre Miller doesn't ma- I can't imagine Keandre Miller is going to be, be playing at the Garden this year. But You think he, he will or will No, I think he won't. No, I don't think so either. He's got to learn the position. You know, he's got a lot of learning to do. Uh, maybe this kid, uh, Hijik from Tampa, you know, he came over in the trade. Rangers got a kid uh, from the Boston Bruins who's got some promise. And I don't know. I mean, to me, they're lacking in physicality. I just don't know who's going to protect. There's a lot, of, you know, Nemenstikov, uh, Spooner, Zuccarello, uh, Zibanejad. These guys are not big guys, you know, and Kevin Hayes doesn't play like he's 6'3", 225 pounds. So, you know, I mean, you got, uh, Leas Anderson, you got Hedl. Who Who's going to protect these guys? Who's going to, you know, step up for them when they're playing the fly? Look at the Islanders. Look at that. You know, they signed Ross Johnston. They got Matt Martin back. Uh, they got Leo Komarov. I mean, you got Tzizekas and Clutterbuck. I mean, when the Rangers play their interdivisional rivals, who's going to protect these kids from getting killed? I mean, the Rangers are real. Unless they do something between now and September. I just don't know who's going to protect the kids. And these kids aren't that big to begin with. You know, they're not uh, blessed with a lot of size, either on the D end or on on, on the forward side. So I don't know. Uh, You hate to have a kid get hurt and have that affect their confidence and start shying away from contact when they get a little bit older. You know, you don't want them uh, getting lasting impressions uh, about the physical nature of the National Hockey League when they're just not ready or someone's not going to step in to intervene. So this is still a a tough sport, Rob. You know, it's still a a physical sport, as we saw in the finals. And actually, throughout the... Throughout the entire playoff, I thought, it, you know, we talked about this. I think uh, it might be going, cycling back maybe to a, a hybrid type of, from you know, 80s, 90s, and 70s with the physicality and, uh, you know, the athleticism of the current day player with the uh, the physicalness of some of the players that played in the 70s and 80s. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Well, yeah, I think you're right. I think they definitely need toughness. Um, you know, if anything, we've seen that. You need that mix. You still need a few guys, especially in the division that they're in uh, with all the games against Philly and Pittsburgh and so on. Uh, The one thing I don't want to see, though, is for them to go out and just throw money, especially since they have the cap space. Uh, I'm just getting a defenseman, getting a big heavy hitter uh, for the sake of of filling a spot. I I think we've seen enough of that in the past with 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 the signing of a Darius Kasparaitis or a signing of a Wade Redden. Or Michael Roosevelt, defenseman that just didn't work out. Yeah, well, Roosevelt did win a cup with the Chicago Blackhawks, right? And yeah. uh, you know, Wade Redden was a, was obviously a huge miss. You know, he was effective. You know, when he played with the Islanders and then was it Ottawa? Yeah, before he came to the Rangers. And but you know, neither of those two players were overly physical. You know, I would know I wouldn't call Michael Roosevelt a real big physical defenseman. Uh, I think he was a stay at home defensive defenseman. I don't know if he. Uh, was overly intimidating or physical, and certainly that could not be said for Redden. And of course, Casparitis was one of the one of the toughest, hard nosed, uh, not always playing it straight type of defenseman. But I think the Rangers need a little sandpaper. I, I mean, I think getting a little bit of that falls way short of abusing the the cap to, to overload the roster with that. I don't think that's their intention, but I do think they need a little bit of that going forward. I, I'm looking at the roster. I just don't see who's going to step up and provide that physical presence for the New Yorker. I don't see any. I mean, Matt Bolesky is not going to make the team this year. And, he, you know, he's a rough player, but he's certainly not overly big and, and you know, and intimidating. And they don't have a Colton Moore. They don't have a Matt Martin. They don't have even a Patrick Maroon uh, or Lucic, you know, to step in and provide some leadership and protection. So. Uh, I think that's going to be a, a big, you know, without beating a dead horse, I think that's going to be a big get, have to get for Gorton and Sather uh, for the start of the season, you know. But um, how about some of the other free agents? What are your thoughts on some of the other clubs that made some moves? You know, the, you know, the Kings made a big splash, obviously. Yeah. Uh, with Kovalchuk uh, giving giving him that giving him that third year uh, that no other team was willing to do. Uh, I. I will. I will stay optimistic. Um, think you know. I'm happy with that move. Um, I was surprised to see, or maybe semi surprised to see, how quickly all the goalies went. Um, on you know, on July 1st, they just they just fell. You know, they did. you know, Halak went to Boston. Carter Carter Hutter went went to Buffalo. Bernier Bernier went to Detroit. Um, you know, and the Islanders had to settle with. Um, 
with Robin Lanner, who uh, is definitely, you know, it's, it's an improvement, but still not where I, I don't think that's where they wanted to be. I don't know if it's because they were so distracted with, with everything with Tavares, um, but they didn't, that they didn't, weren't aggressive enough to get a goalie right away. Uh, additionally, you know, I think right now we're in this, you know, great waiting period of, of Carlson and, and Max, pa- Max Pacioretty with the news just coming out yesterday that they are not, that the Canadians are not going to extend Pacioretty. So, no. so I, I don't think he, he, he'll move until, until the trading deadline. Yeah. Just getting back to the goalie for some, I'm surprised Pavlik, you know, I wasn't a big Pavlik fan when the Rangers signed him last year from the AHL. But you know what? When he played for the Rangers, he played decent. He had he played some he played pretty well. He there were games where he played better than Lundqvist. And I'm surprised that a the Rangers did not bring him back unless they really want to give Georgia a real shot at it this year. But I'd rather have Georgia play every day as a 22 year old goalie. But I'm surprised the Islanders or some other team, especially like you said on July 1st. I'm surprised that Pavlik didn't get. Uh, he still, um, you know, the music has stopped. And he's still circling the chairs, you know. He still doesn't have a position right now. I'm surprised that uh, other clubs haven't made uh, an offer to, uh, for him. I thought the Islanders would definitely make him an offer. But, you know, the Carlson thing is very interesting. And like you said, Pacioretty is not going to be extended. He's he's done in Montreal. You know, it's obvious. It's just a matter of time. But I don't know if he's overrated. I don't know if Pacioretty is, o- is overrated or not. I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure he's the type of guy I want the Rangers. To- I know he's a local kid out of Connecticut. I don't know if he's the type of guy that I want the Rangers to, you know, to go after and Carlson, I mean, are the Rangers ready for a Carlson right now? Is he going to be the difference maker? I mean, he couldn't deliver a Stanley Cup to Ottawa. Why would the Rangers want to make an investment in Carlson right now? Which I don't think they will, but why even contemplate it, you know? Yeah, I couldn't imagine. They'd have to give up the world for him. Um, and there's absolutely no point to having a defenseman like that right now. Right. Um, you know, it's just disappointing that as we as we wind down Lund- Lundqvist's career in New York, this is the, this is the team, you know, the defense that he's going to have in front of him. It would be fun to have Carlson there, but no, I I, I think we're going to see if Carlson moves, he's going somewhere like uh, Vegas or Tampa Bay. Yeah, I think Vegas and Tampa Bay are probably still the two. You know, there was some rumors last week when you were on vacation that uh, the Rangers might be willing to take on Callahan's contract and maybe even Bobby Ryan's contract from Ottawa in the three-way deal, and the Rangers would somehow get Kucherov. Wouldn't that have been something if the Rangers could have stolen the Kucherov just so they could take on a Callahan contract and a Bobby Ryan contract? That, that move I would have made. If you can get a, a world-class talent in a Kucherov, I think that's something that the Rangers could have worked around, you know? Even if they had to sit Bobby Ryan in the press box or Callahan. I mean, Callahan's not going to play a full season anymore anyway. You know, the guy's always hurt. So if you get 30, 40 games out of Callahan going forward a year, that's probably a lot. So I don't know if he would really be taking up a lot of roster space when you got a guy who's not going to play every day anyway and Bobby Ryan you know who knows but to get a Kucherov but it it, it didn't happen it didn't materialize and now with Kucherov signed to an eight-year extension I don't think Tampa Bay is going to you know get rid of him now so yeah I don't know who I don't know if Vegas is the leading candidate for Carlson San Jose is I think is in the mix Tampa Bay maybe even Toronto there's some talk to Toronto might Still be in the mix for Carlson, but it's going to be interesting. Whoever gets gets him will be a world class uh, world class addition to their team. Uh, you're, you're not kidding. Um, yeah, and, and now after that, we'll just be. This is you know the favorite time of the year for these hockey writers. They all put on their Twitter feed their pictures of their vacation house, and we, we've got about a, we've got about five weeks of, of nothingness if these yeah. don't go through. That's true. Well, what we'll do, Rob, is we will uh, end this podcast uh, in a moment. You know, we will pick it up again in September. You and I can brainstorm, you know, what we want to talk about, you know, leading up to the New York Rangers season. But think about, again, this is the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway, and we want to keep those players in mind, not veer too far off the menu. And maybe we can come up with some players that were trades going back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s that made a big impact that we can build a show around. And, of course, we welcome... Everybody who's listening to the podcast to uh, go to our website, you know, uh, go tommyboyproductions.lipson.com and uh, provide us with, with ideas for Rob and I to talk about players, playoffs, trades, anything that you want to talk about that we can build a show around that would interest you. That would be greatly appreciated. And But one final thing on Lundquist, you know, I think it was a big miss for Lundquist not to want to be moved at the trading deadline last year. And I think we may see his mind being changed around the holiday season coming up. If the Rangers, you know, play the way they're projected to play and not winning a lot of games. And I I can't see a guy like that wanting to go through some growing pains. And 
I could see him changing his mind next year and the Rangers trying to accommodate him, move him to a Stanley Cup contender. Uh, I think that's definitely something that we should keep an eye out on. Yeah, that'll, that'll be interesting coming, you know, especially seeing how this year plays out if they get off to a slow start and how, you know, teams that need a goalie, if there's any injuries or teams overperform that weren't expecting to perform, he, Lundqvist would be a great fit for the end of the season. I agree, Rob. And I don't think this is a one-year build. I think this is probably a, a two- or three-year build. So I don't think this would just be a one-year thing for Lundqvist. I think he would probably be looking at a similar type of situation, uh, maybe incremental improvement the second year of this rebuild. But I don't think enough to really uh, take advantage of his uh, you know, his timeline on his, on his career. Any closing thoughts, Rob, before we end it? No, you know, I just want to wish everybody a great end of the summer, quiet hockey time, and looking forward to everything getting started again. Absolutely. And then, Rob, I want to thank you for all that you do and for your help on these podcasts. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. If something was to come up unexpectedly, a major trade or something uh, that's newsworthy, Rob and I will get back at it before the end of the summer. But until then, again, this is the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. On behalf of Rob Berger, this is Tom Browning. Thanks again. Thank you for listening. This has been a Go Tommy Boy production.